There be time enough for counting when the dealing's done. You gotta know when to hold him, know when to fold him, know when to walk away, know when to run. <laughs> you gotta count your money. Sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting when Dylan's done. Hey, everybody, listen, I want to talk about this uh, beautiful young lady who is our daughter. She is America's sweetheart. She's my daughter. Mm -hmm. uh, she has a name that's unusual for the African American girl. It's Simone Biles. And this young lady, who's very short, pretty little thing and they tell me that big thing come in small packages well today this small package again showed up and showed us something by not doing something she sat down Get you thinking and where the topics are hot. Feel free to comment whether we agree or not, cuz he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones, he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones, Jones. Come on in. The water's fine. Da 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 do 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 do. Hello, everybody. So on the Soul of the Jones show, I'm he. It is the evening edition, baby. How y'all is? Come on in. Come on in. Clemens and Reese and Thomas and Lula B and Crawford and Carter and Brown and Watchin and Joseph Phillips. Blessings to you. So, so, so. <laughs> I passed. <her. laughs> Good to see you, Tina Iron. Listen, uh, this show is dedicated to all of you Olympians out there. Tokyo has been overtaken by folks who were jumping up and down and swimming and diving and, and flipping and... Uh, I don't know, all kind of stuff. Good to see you, Patricia Royster. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, you see, uh, this uh, woman here, Simone Biles, I got an article from CNN I thought it was pretty good. It was written by Holly Yan, so I can't give myself all the credit for it. Sim uh, Simone Biles doesn't need more medals, or, yeah, medals. She don't need them more. Mm -mm. She's back at the Olympics for something much more impactful at the age uh, how old is she y'all no, 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 i don't remember her age she's four feet eight inches we do know that often feels uh she has the weight of the world on my shoulder those are her words mitzi good to see you colin good to see it valerie good to see it rough good to see it uh-huh she's 24 joe hill says 24 Greetings from the Netherlands. Blessings to you from the Netherlands. Blessings. Uh, yeah. Um, this girl, Pitts, did something today. Holla at your girl. Uh, that we all, all of us, no matter what your walk of life is. Now, she's not the only one who did this. Another young lady did this who carried the torch uh, of the Olympics. Okay. She also took a seat. They both, Jackie McClendon, took a seat for the same reason. And somebody else prior to them also thought about taking the seat for the same reason. And y'all know who that was? Hmm? That man's name was Michael Phelps. Y'all know who that is, right? He said he almost quit. And he was told that he could not quit. 
You can't quit, man. Man, you can't quit. Do you realize how damaging that would be for you to quit? Hmm? Hmm? Well, this young lady showed us all something. It's a, it's something that I wish that the church, it's uh, uh, not just just society in itself, uh, the world, not just those out there in the, vis the different uh, vicissitudes of life that y'all go through outside of Christendom, but those of you who are believers should take a note of this. You got to know when to hold it. You got to know when to fold. You got to know when to walk away. She took away another girl's dream of being an Olympian by going, what? Only to quit. She's been there plenty of times and this is a a, a, a rookie move. There's more uh, to it. Show up to show out. Dave Weaver. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know all of that. I don't know. I don't know all that background. All I know is what the girl did today. Uh huh. Uh, I completely agree. I've not uh, read the entire story, but uh, my yeah, mm hmm. And she did this for mental health reasons. Mental health reasons. Um, she was the first Olympic athlete ever anointed with a Twitter emoji reflecting her status as a goat, or the greatest of all time. Just tweet, um, uh, Simone, uh, Simone bites. I'm sorry, bows. <laughs> I can't see. My contacts always get cloudy when I'm trying to read. <laughs> okay. A goat in a leotard performing a split leap with the gold medal around its neck shows up <laughs> at the Tokyo Olympic. So the world was stunned when the five-time Olympic medalist withdrew from the team gymnastics competition on Tuesday. As today, y'all, for those of you who are watching this down the road. But the GOAT doesn't need more medals. She already has four Olympic golds and 19 world championship titles. She didn't need another one. As the only survivor of Larry uh, Nasser's sexual abuse to compete in these Olympics, you remember him? I had to come back to the sport to be a voice, to have uh, change happen. Bowles told NBC's uh, holder this year. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to be uh, playing a show from the vault of Sir Walter on changes that happen and how to uh, shift when the change happen. Keep watching the channel at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Me and my four brothers, or well, three brothers, will be teaching that lesson there. Uh, Self-love and the bigger picture. That's what she taught us. And in doing so, she forced her teammates to step up. Sometimes silver is your gold. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand? This is important. Quote, I feel like if there weren't a remaining survivor in the sport, they would have just brushed it to the side. But since I'm still here, and I have quite a social media presence and platform, they have to do something. Bowles has been a fierce advocate for sexual abuse survivors since NASA, uh, a former USA gymnastics teacher, a team that is doctor, accused of sexual abuse. Remember that? 150 women? It was, it was horrible. She's also fearless in calling out USA gymnastics, the national governing body for the sport she still competes in for not launching an independent investigation into this NASA scandal. How sad. This is the first Olympics since the NASA scandal broke and the first in decades without either Bella or Martha Caroli. Retired Hall of Fame coaches and former national team coordinators whose methods have been criticized by ex-gymnasts. Right? So today... I just felt like it would be a little bit better to take a back seat and work on my mindfulness. Mm. Mm. This, this is coming from a 24 year old. I knew that the girls would do an absolutely great job. 
and I didn't want to risk the team a medal for my screw-ups because they worked way too hard for that, Bow told the journalist today. I took a step back because I didn't want to do something silly out there and get injured. I thought it was best if the girls uh, took over and did the rest of the job which they absolutely did. Fellow Olympian uh, uh, champion Ali Raisman tweeted her support and said it's difficult for many to understand what Biles is facing. Now, y'all, I commend her. And the other young lady, I don't remember her name. I commend her. All right, let's talk about this, shall we? The pressure of the sport itself and the pressure of people wanting her to bring home the gold medal can stress anybody out. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, uh, holla at you, girl. Always enjoy seeing you. A competition has a lot of pressure attached to it, and if she quit to take a mental break, so be it, or amen. Or if she quit to make a point regarding sexual abuse, then she should be applauded. Come on, Ruff. You preach it tonight on the Sir Walter Jones show. <laughs> As African man, I'm proud to be a child. We can't carry the weight of households. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Quote her, Rogers. Quote her. All right? Ladies, man. Not just ladies, but brothers, especially y'all, okay? We have got to do better for ourselves and to ourselves for the benefit of other selves. The world is watching me. The whole wide world of sports is watching me. And that place that I am in is an amazing gift because I have an opportunity to teach a message and that message can be the gospel as well. Do you not realize that the gospel message is not just the message of Jesus Christ and his saving power? Did y'all realize that? It's not just that? Now, I, sh I shouldn't be saying just because that, that only that part alone is huge. But what the Christian world have done was just presented that and then we were done. You understand? We felt that we were done. I'm saved now, so I'm done. And this is why the church is weak and can't evangelize a gnat because you think that's it. It's me, us, and no one else. Take a break is not quitting or giving up. Yes, important. Remember the Sabbath. Come on, man. Come on. You better preach this, Patrick. And just because a preacher uh, takes a sabbatical doesn't mean he was caught in a scandal. Come on, man. You got something you need to tell us. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, you are wise, and I thank God for using you. I'm learning. Amen. <laughs> she is wise. Uh, she had too much weight. Yes. Come on, y'all. She used wisdom, and it freed her from the opinions of others we have become voyeurs and yeah and dictators people want others man listen that was good still tina um she is a young black girl so you realize the pressure of the double negative already she's already a double negative she's black and she's a woman now she's an, an olympian and the world is watching her that's too much pressure for not just a young girl at 24, that's too much pressure for a man my age. You understand? To merge. So what she did was she took a break because she realized the limit to where she can go and says, I'm not going to kill myself just for something I already have. I got medals. I got fame. I already have influence. I don't need any of that. So I'm not going to kill myself because I'm trying to prove to somebody what I have. I need to protect my mentality and my body because if my brain is, is broke, my body going to be broke. So let me stop flipping and sit down and let the other team 
There is no I. Y'all always told me that in team. Okay. So I've got these other ladies a part of a team. All right. It ain't about me. It's about us. I am because we are. Y'all put that in the comments and remember it. I am because we are. I read to y'all last week about uh, uh, and um, Paul bringing up the purpose of the body out of First Corinthians chapter 12. He gave a beautiful breakdown of the significance of what the hand is to the body, the eye is to the body, the nose is the body. And none of these parts can ever say, I can't, the, the nose can't say, because I can't see, I don't need to be a part of the body. I'm insignificant. All right? It makes no sense. You are a breathing tool. I can smell things coming. I can smell when the food is spoiling. I can smell that there is a fire in my house. The eyes can't smell that. It's too busy closing my eyelids at night to go to sleep. My nose wakes me up to the danger. Do you understand? My eyes help me when I'm driving. I don't need to smell much when I'm driving. I really don't need to smell anything. But when I'm driving, I need my eyes. So my eyes become extremely important. The most important uh, part of my body when I'm driving then is my eyes. Yes, my feet is pushing down on the gas. Yes, and the, the, and the, the, uh, the foot is just as important as pressing down uh, the, the brake. They all are very important. But the focus at that moment is on my eyes. You understand? I need to eat. My eyes can't eat for me. My nose can smell the food, but my nose can't eat it. I can shove food all down my nose all I want to, but just won't. There's no mastication glands there to, to crunch it up. Make it small enough so that it can fit down my esophagus. You understand? So it must go through a process, a garbage collection service, a streets of sanitation up in there. And they must press the food down. These tephuses that I got, even though I don't have all the ones that I wish I had, they press it down. That's the purpose of the mouth. You understand? So she said, I can't do all of the work. So let me look over to my hands and my eyes and my feet my footsteps, okay and let them this is the ear over there go ahead ear tumble girl you better tumble while i sit back and applause my girls now the olympics is not over we've she's still got opportunity to uh enter into other ones all while they're in tokyo so it's not over but today she did the wise thing and sat her pretty little self down and said, I'm going to sit and watch because my mental state is more important than anything that I got going right now. I can't regain my mentality once it's gone. My mind, my mind, my mind is gone. That's an old song that the, co the congregation was singing. My mind, my mind, my mind is gone. I never understood that song. Never, never, never could understand why you singing about your mind is gone. You y'all need to get some help. That's probably what the church's problem is. Y'all singing these songs because you was really try you were bleeding in front of everybody, trying to tell everybody, y'all know I'm crazy, right? Mother, mother, mother May High and Mother Bobo, there, there it is the actress, Mother Bobo and Sister Slewfoot was singing them songs. My my, my What? You go get your mind taken care of, all right? So her and Phelps and this other young lady and probably several others have helped us understand the pressures of mental health and how we need to focus back on those people who are struggling with this and they can't cope with it because if they talk about it, then um, you guys are going to dismiss them. You know how many uh, actors and actresses and those in Hollywood uh, lost their lives? Due to mental stress and mental illness, 
hung themselves, oh, oh, OD'd on on drugs and 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 did all kind of stuff because the mental health you can't talk about it because still even though we're in in 2021 you still cannot uh, boldly bring up the subject that I have some mental stress because it's taboo to talk about it good to see you Ruth Chester how that how that how that handsome man and them that little handsome boy of yours and them pretty little girls huh how they doing y'all all right that's my that's my new favorite family y'all huh you can't talk about it in church because uh if you go to somebody to talk about your mind they're gonna say whoa whoa and they're gonna take this oil and pour it on you and and your new your new dress that you just bought at k n g is gonna be all oily and you can't you can't dry clean that Oh, but you're going to go home with faith. You're going to look like a grease monkey because they're going to pour oil on you and say, all right, go home. God's going to hear you. And that's the, that's it. They're done with you. And you go home to a, a, a chaotic situation at home. And then you got to wait six more days to go back to that same place called the church so they can pour oil on the backside because they missed it. And nobody's doing follow-up. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody's sending counselors to the church. Listen, for 40 years, this mama, mama may I, been having this same problem. Why is she always angry? Why is this one always speaking in tongues when this person is trying to talk? Y'all like, wait a minute. Are, is tongues mean that the, the people are crazy? Yes and no. <laughs> uh huh. <Yeah. laughs> yes and no. Uh huh. Thank you, Annette Harris. Annette is doing those shows. Uh, she dedicated her whole uh, radio career to that. Dimitri Pitts has now moved into the mental health um, on on Monday nights, and now that she's back to work, you know, sometimes it might be Tuesday. <laughs> okay, Taco Tuesday. Meet Dimitri Pitts. Okay. But I went to my pastor and I, and I had a problem with my ex-wife. Y'all don't know which one because I've been married twice. So I protect my ex-wives because y'all never know which one I'm talking about. But anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, I went to my pastor. I said, Bishop, um, you know, this woman, every time I want to sit down and talk with her, she goes, she goes crazy with her tongues. I can't get a word in edgewise when when I'm trying to get a breakthrough. She trying to get a breakthrough with these tongues. And I can't I can't talk English to her. And my bishop, my pastor said, son, I was dressing him. That it was first Sunday. So I was putting on his class A. All right. He said, son, I said, yes, sir. He said, I have discovered in the at that time, it might have been 50 years he had been pastoring. He said, in the 50 years I've been pastoring this church, I come to the realization that the ones who speak in tongues the most are crazy. I said, can I pass you uh, a cup of water? Yeah, you, do you need some coffee? Bishop, do you, do you need some tea? Listen, you ain't got to go down in that sanctuary. We can stay here all night. You want me to go order some from uh, Uber Eats? Because you talking my language right now. He said, the ones who do that the most are the, the ones who love to disrupt the services so that the attention can come on them. He says, they are mentally ill and we need to do something about this. Son, we don't talk about this enough in our churches. I said, see, this is why I'm sitting up under this ministry because you talk like this. That old hateful mind I used to have, my mind is gone because Jesus came and took my mind. This song was based on the scripture that state. Yeah, I know what it meant. I found out later on what they were saying. They never, Rochelle Corbin, she's a historian, by the way. They never seen that part. So when I was young, no, it's just my mind is gone. And I'm like, yep, your mind is gone, Sister Mayhem. That's why your name's Sister Mayhem. 
Good to see you, Elder Kevin McGee. Blessings to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Melissa Melissa Green. Hey, girl. He said, I'd rather you speak words than in tongues. Everything is done in deep. Come on, come on, come on. Self-care is necessary. Taking care of your mental health is an essential part of self-care. Self-care. More rich kids are prone to mental health and unstable due to the fact that they have to please the parents' dream. But, mm, mm. Right there, Williams. Right there. Right there. Right there. Good to see you, Pastor Jerome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, he was. Uh, that's uh, why a lot of brothers don't want to marry or date save women. Alfreda, you are right. This is what held me up for years. I didn't want to. I didn't want to have no dealings with a church girl because I don't care how pretty they were. Pretty, pretty fine, just beautiful. When they walked, the music played. I said, "She crazy," and still to this day. Here's my transparency. It's my transparency. You ain't got to be yours. It's mine. Still to this day, when I see a very pretty girl who's single, I ask the question, God, is she crazy? Mm -hmm. Is she crazy? Not that I'm after her. Not that I want her. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied in the state that I'm in. <laughs> okay. But when I see them, I'd be like, God, is she crazy? She got to be. Now, that's unfair for me to put that cloud on a woman because she's so beautiful. And she in her 40s, 50s, and she's single. Uh, and that's not right. But unfortunately, that the, the brothers who had to deal with that, many of us come to that conclusion. Oh, she got to be crazy. Now, the women are saying the same thing about us. So oh, he must be a man, a womanizer. He must be a hoe. He must be this. He must be that. Women say the same thing about us. So why can't we do the repeat? We should never. We, we should not be doing that, y'all. We shouldn't. Unfortunately, uh, the chances that I'm right. <laughs> yeah. The next question you ask is, God, does she have a lot of debt? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Barbie, uh-oh, here come the women. Hide, hide, Elder McGee. The women are coming after us. We're being too transparent. Now, I have to do a clubhouse at 8 o'clock Thursday night to an all-women's group. And I'm going to say some things in that women's group that they ain't going to like. Y'all ain't going to like it either. All right? So go to Vanessa McCoy uh, Clubhouse, Vanessa McCoy, she's a member of our church, and I'm going to tell them all about themselves and what men feel. Mm -hmm. And they can like it or they can, they can hate it. I don't care. They're going to hate it. You, you ain't scared? <laughs> there are many uncovered crazy ones who do not speak in tongues as well. Yeah, true. But we're talking about the tongues right now. We're talking about them tongue folks. All right, now we stop talking about tongue folks. Now let's talk about the ones who don't, don't speak in tongues. Listen. That usher that's at the front door who look at you with that look, why she got to look like that? Hmm? Why she feel like I'm that she doing me a favor by bringing me up to the front and sending me in that seat? Like, I just, really? I'm, if you doing me a favor, I can find, I, I got two eyes, I can see that seat. Why are you mad at me? I came to the church to worship. Why are you mad at me? I just showed up at the door. Huh? That usher probably had mental illness. Mm-hmm. Everybody has depth, physical, mental, emotional. And the list goes on. Mm-hmm. You know the bunker. <laughs> God is watching. <laughs> that usher feet hurt. That's why. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm trying to tell y'all. So, Biles. Got us talking about mental health. This is why I say that she did an amazing thing today. By who would have thought, Lisa? Good to see you. You late? Why are you late? Who would have thought that a person sitting down would have such an impact on the on the nation? Not just that, not just the nation, or not just Tokyo, not just America, but the world. That's an impact because we don't talk about mental health. 
You know who need to talk about mental health more and more and more and 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 equip their people with it? The um police. The legal system need to talk more and more about it because there would be less mishaps where police show up to a, 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 a domestication and then he shoot through the door and kill the, the man with the mental illness and his mama. I'm saying that because that's what happened in Chicago. These, they're, they're, they're being shot dead because the police are not equipped to de-escalate a situation because he think that this person is a danger and he is a person is a danger, but you are not trained to de-escalate this. You're just trained to shoot. And many of them, most cops are, are trained to shoot to kill. If you pull your weapon, you get ready not to maim or hurt or injure. You pull your gun to kill. You pull your taser to de-escalate, meaning more than then the escalate <laughs> but you you pull it to render uh, uh, uh less danger that's what the the taser is for it's not a lethal weapon when you pull uh your gun from the holster and you got your finger on the trigger they are trained to not shoot for the finger not shoot the toe no find his heart and take him out. How do I know? Because every police friend that I have told me that's what they're trained to do. Save your life first. And take that person out of here. So what they've been doing was taking out people who could have been saved if they just were trained more. The church is just as bad. It's just as bad. Y'all are not equipped. You just pour oil on folk and then you're done and send them home and they are riotous. They really do because there was uh, research on the effects of mental stress. The company, yes, was by us surrounding the police. You see what I'm saying? And the homeless, if you walk into a, a, your, a, your average city, most homeless people are mentally ill, they said. Most. And the second place, the second governmental institution where the mentally ill is or treated is in the prisons and the jails. So the mentally ill is on the street, homeless. Number two, they're in the jails and the prisons. Number three, they're in the mental hospitals. And number four, they're in your church. Serving on your deacon board. They're on the mother's board. They're in the choir. They're on the organ. And guess what? He's also your pastor. Mm. See, Pitt says 70% of them are also veterans. My friend John Nevely uh, works with the homeless and he attests to the mental illness. See? Mm -hmm. That was very wise of her because we can't change what we, mm, dad is girl. That's it. How you doing, by the way? Naomi Osaka set a precedence for these sports uh, figures to be transparent about taking care of. Yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, that's the name. Naomi Osaka. That's it. I knew you'd come through. Annette, Annette don't come around here that much. She don't watch. She don't watch my show. She don't. She don't watch. She don't watch my show. She don't watch. Oh, but when I'm talking about mental health, oh, she she just shows up. I watch all her shows. All. Oh, even when I'm sleeping and snoring and slumber. I just said, what? what what's Annette Harris doing? Let me turn it off. No, she don't come on my shows. She don't come on. She hear that though. She hear that. Now she gonna inbox me and go off on me in a few minutes. Five, four, <laughs> three. Uh, the church has dropped the ball on mental illness by placing stigmas on them. Even possession. Uh, oh, allegation. Yep. Chemical. Yep. I take Prozac for mine. <laughs> come on. I'm convinced that ushers are chosen by a secret uh, evaluation. <laughs> and they said the truth will set you free. <laughs> Caught up. <laughs> Y'all crazy. Y'all crazy. Victoria Corder family. Hey, 
Okay. Okay. Victoria Carter. Blessed. I love that woman. She is a blessing to our ministry. My, myself and my brother. Blessing, blessing, blessing. I love that girl. Uh, yeah. See, thank you, Pitts. She needs to show up more. All right. So, Biles have blessed us today, y'all, in a mighty way. All right. No, she's not the only one. But right now, she's the focus. She's the star of the day. So, why not? Uh, the gambler, here are the lyrics. Later, be right before you get to the the chorus line, or what's called the hook, the gambler is in the room, and there's another man uh, playing cards, and the gambler says, "Listen, give me a, give me a shot of your whiskey and a, and and a, a, a cigarette, and give me a light, and I'm gonna show you how to play cards, how to gamble this." The lyrics is brilliant because he does he doesn't really repeat in, in, in the verses. I think this is one of the most brilliant songs written. Okay. Um and as you go further into the story, it says if you're gonna play the game, boy, you gotta learn to play it right. And the the, the lyric says, You've got to know when to hold them. When to hold them. <laughs> know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Did y'all hear that part? That's important. And not just walk away, know when to run. I said that last show. I told y'all about leaving your churches. Some people ask me, how do I leave my church? Like forest. Learn when to walk away. But in your situation, depending on who you are, you need to learn how to run. That movie called, the, the miniseries called Roots. Uh, when they chopped uh, Chicken George, not Chicken George, Kunta Kinte, when they chopped his foot to stop him from running away, he was trying to learn how to walk, and then he he was he was he was trying to get his exercise up and what have you, and then what's it, Chicken George was asking, what not Chicken George, Fiddler, Fiddler asked him, what are you doing? He says, I'm gonna learn to run. I'm going to learn how to run. And that's exactly what he did again. He ain't, he ain't go too far. Okay. And know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table. I tell people all the time. Never let them see your hand. Never let them see what your right hand. Let, don't let your right hand even know what your left hand is doing. Never let them see the sweat. Do stuff in the closet. Pray in the closet. Don't be such a big thing and let everybody know what your plan is and your schemes of things because they will destroy it, tear it down. Don't tell the devil nothing. He cannot read your mind. Y'all been fooled to believe that the devil can read minds. He cannot. If he could read minds, then he would be omniscient like God. And he is not. He would be omnipresent like God and he is not but Satan have eyes and he got ears do you understand so he know he know what you saying <laughs> hey Art I hear you in there Oh, that's all right. <laughs> hey, Art Lewis is here. He he know he can see. So I don't tell him nothing. I just do it. <laughs> Matter of fact, the Bible says if the princes had known that crucifying Christ would save my soul, that the princes would not have crucified him. Well, how did they find out? Well, the Evangelium in Genesis chapter 315 about the bruising the head and the heel and the, and the, and the head bruising the heel, that was the first prophecy from God about what was to happen. Satan saw that and thought he he understood what that meant and for a couple thousand years he tried to 
chase after that prophecy by just killing folk and wiping out this and destroying this and tricking these people and tricking that because he thought he knew what the prophecy meant. He was wrong because God made sure that he didn't put, he didn't give the name yet. He hid his name. Y'all go to my show called What's in the Name. God was strategic because he know that Satan can hear and he can see. And so he hid his name. He didn't reveal his name because if doing that, then he understood that you would have a, uh, you would be, you would have the rights and the, the privileges because we name drop all the time to get the things that we need. You have the rights of a attorney. Okay, and all these things you can forge um, checks and all kinds of stuff. So God, didn't, he said, no, no, my name is very important. So they Moses says, uh, you're sending me, huh? So that people are going to ask me, what's your name? And God says, I am that I am. What? Hold up. Hold up, God. That is not a name. <laughs> what is that? Y'all first. Um. Uh, person was it singular of the verb to be that's not a name i am that i i am what he said hey hey just tell him i am sent you don't worry there's still power behind that and tell your brother to speak for me because you seem to have a stutter problem <laughs> he'll he'll speak for you all right you do the work and god hid himself in a name and so they had to create names elohim Adonai, y'all call him Jehovah. Well, that's not really a real name. That's a that's that's a car that runs with gas and electric. Jehovah is a hybrid. That ain't his name. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yahweh, uh huh, was revealed, and then he said, "I'm gonna come down from heaven on earth and I'm going to show myself to the people in whom I'm getting ready to save. And he says, I'm going to put myself in this person and you shall call his name Emmanuel. And what does that name mean? Y'all? Oh, it's too much. It's not even Thursday yet. Mm -hmm. And when you call that name, then you realize, Oh, I'm him. I am. He, I am that I am in this guy. And when this guy speaks, he's going to say, I counted not robbery to be equal with the I am. Y'all see what's happening? And then he said, listen, wherever I go, he goes, my buddy, my buddy, eh, my buddy and me. <laughs> Jesus sound better than that. All right. Then he says, you can't go to the father except through the son. You can't go to the son except the father draw you. And you can't call Lord, Lord, except through the Holy Spirit. We are three in one. We team. Teamwork. Teamwork. Make the dream work. So Simone Biles realized that same concept. I got a team here. And wherever I go, they go, kid sister, kid sister, kid sister and me. Now go tumbling while I sit down and enjoy the metal y'all getting ready to bring home. Mm, if you see the father, you've seen me. Oh, this is too good. It's too good for my taste. Too good. Regardless of what they do to her, one door closes, another. Come on, come on, come on. The devil watches y'all Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, so he knows when y'all watch it. So what's the show? <laughs> Woo, to the wee. Yeah, see? See, look, Annette's going to bed. Good night. Uh-huh. Thanks for addressing us. You're welcome. See, she gone. She can't, she's such a young lady, she can't, she can't hold her eyes open too long. Cause my shows go long and she, the Ned Harris show, her show go two hours. But at nighttime, she can't watch us. Bedtime for Bonzo. <laughs> Y'all listen, I didn't want to go long. I just want to do my used to be hour shows. I've been going two hours lately. I ain't doing that tonight. There used to be a thing called principles that we held the person to, not putting them on any kind of pedestal, but rather expectations to one who chooses to do certain things since the Hippocratic Oath, wait for the doctor to schedule your surgery, then the day of uh, decides to take, what, what, wow, David Weaver, man, you preaching on a Tuesday night? Man, that was, that's heavy. I may have to give you a 10% of whatever they give me. 
someday. I'm not sure when because they don't always give. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. If you want to support the channel, let the commercials play, y'all. Let the music play. Oh, I got to finish this. these lyrics here, all right? Uh, you've got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. You never count your money when you're sitting at the table. Why at the table? Because everybody there watching you. There's There'll be time enough for counting when that dealing is done. Y'all, I celebrate this girl. And the people are going to judge her for what she did. And they're going to feel like we didn't get the medal that we deserve because you decided to sit out. Just tell those people to shut up. Ignore them. All right. Ignore them. And I know it's in the mentality of, 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 of Simone. She, she's saying, I really hope America still loves me. That's pretty much what she's saying. I hope they still receive me for doing the right thing for me. If I take care of my mind, my body is taken care of. And then I can come back to the Olympics and keep winning medals. But unfortunately, we put so much stress and weight on our goats <laughs> and those potential goats out there. We put so much stress on them. We use them up. And then we move to the next victim. That's what we do. And we have to know how to support one another. We don't do it, y'all. This is a lesson. Lesson learned. I applaud you, girl. Do I have one of them? Oh, let me see it. I think I, I think I got I got something for you. I think I got I think I got one. Hold on, where? Where here it is. Here it is. I applaud you, girl. I applaud you. Congratulations. Thank you for being wise. Because the young people can see this in her age bracket and say, Oh wow, you know what? I ain't think about that. I've been slipping up too mentally. I've been having stress. I've been I can't talk to my parents about this. But I, what Simone did, maybe I can sit down and take a break and examine what's going on in my mind. Yeah, I, I, I applaud her. If that surgeon is mentally unstable, you better hope he makes a mental health day. Yeah, you're like, woo, depend on it. Ooh, wait. Now, this girl here, she works in the hospital, y'all, every day. She knows what she's talking about. Live to have surgery another day or with, mm, mm. People shouldn't put too much pressure on athletes. Yes, Hope. Uh, it never helps. Think about when people say no pressure. Can't remember when it's ever helped. Wow, hopes. Wow, wow, wow. That's good stuff. Shut up and sit down. <laughs> They're not out there doing what she does. Like to see. Yeah. Amen. Amen. April Echoes, good to see you. All right. I love y'all. I appreciate you. And if y'all notice, uh, I go on a everyday spree of doing my shows, and then you won't see me for days. Sometime a whole week would pass and you have to go through uh, my old shows. You have to binge watch my old shows because Sir Walter Jones shuts it down. And that don't mean that I'm always out of town. I could be right here in Chicago, but I shut it down. When I have had enough, you won't hear about me for a few days so that I could get my strength back. I'm a book author. I have three books on Amazon right now that I have to continue to push, push, push. And then I have, I have uh, four coming. Well, that's just in that series. I have four more coming. So in that series, there's seven books in that series. Then I've got another five that's in the back burner that I'm always writing that will be released over the next few years, okay? So I've got to write, understand? And I, and I have to teach on finances and, and I have to teach Sunday school and I teach Bible study and I have to, you know, I have to, all these things and I have children that I, I love and I want to see. I drive, either drive or fly to Atlanta to see my grandson, my my son, my brother lives there. Or, you know, and, and so there's a lot going on in my life and I know when to shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> I'll, I'll let your girl say, I binge watch you. <laughs> I'll be seeing your comments and I'll be cracking up. I'll be cracking up, but be loving it. Emotional committees meeting day one. Mm. April, that's good. That's good. Joan, hey, girl. Jesus rested. Why shouldn't we? There's a place you should go. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane with his boys and they chilled out. You need to know when the rest. You need to know. You need to know. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Um, you gotta know where what? Where is that? Uh, already has something lined up for the next move. Yeah, I know she do. Yeah, I know David Weaver. <laughs> I love David Weaver. <laughs> I know. I know you. I know your spirit. You're a good man. Point of clarification, Naomi Osaki decided not to compete in the French Open and the Wilmington because of her mental health. Uh, she actually played in the Olympics and was eliminated today in the third round. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, Annette, br who brought that up? Annette? Uh, the French Open and Wilmington. Yes. Yes, not the Olympics, right? Okay, thank you for that. <clears throat> thank you for that. Um, yeah, because, you know, we got to get it right on this show or pe people are going to be like, you know what? He, he he talk a mean game, but he's inaccurate in this history. <laughs> That's why I have people always trying to help me out. Y'all, we have built a wonderful community under the Sir Walter Jones uh, umbrella. And it is a great community where people come over here and they're helped. They're, these are the most wise men and women that I know who are right here talking to us right now. So if you're new to the show, get ready. Um, because these people, uh, they not drink, they're not milk drinkers. They might drink milk, you know, maybe put it in their cereal or something like that. But these are meat eaters over here. What, Annette, you still here? That's not what I was referring to. I meant Naomi set the precedent before the Olympics. Oh, okay. I, I thought that's what you meant. Uh, and you woke up out of your sleeping slumber to tell us. <laughs> you left the show and then your notification said, hey, girl, hey, girl, you're being challenged. <laughs> see, see what I tell y'all. Uh -huh. Bios has started a mental health movement. Yes, Nakia. Hey, Nakia, how you doing? How you doing? If a person doesn't rest their mind and body, both will find rest on the, their own. But it could, ooh, Lola B, that's good. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. No baby. We're meat eaters. What? 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 Oh, oh, we're meat eaters. Come on. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Come on. I get it. All right, y'all. I'm done. My dog is needing my attention. I'm in. <laughs> but, okay. I got to go, y'all. I appreciate it. One uh, clock keeper. I'm I'm assuming I've been here in an hour. All right, we've had a good 120 people who were here. So good to see y'all. Come on a Tuesday night. All right, tomorrow three o'clock. The brothers will be talking about um, what is that show called? It's called When Life Changes, God is Good. When life change, God is good. Okay, it's a round table. One hour, just one hour. If you got one hour in your afternoon, check us out, and you might learn something. Um, we didn't realize that we were talking about something that few, a few weeks after that show, we were f going to be faced with two important deaths in our family. My grandmother died and then my mother died right after we did that show on life changes. And we were invoking and, and beating the table and trying to encourage the, the audience to prepare for a life change, not realizing that all four of our lives will change forever. All right, so that's tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. You said it right initially, Walter twisted it, hence the no clarification. Oh, I twisted it? Okay, all I said was I remember her. And I don't know where the twist came, but come on, baby. <laughs> Let's do the twist. I love y'all. Take care of yourselves and one another. Love. Love is the reason for the season. If it's Christmas, then enjoy that. But if it's just a regular other day, it still applies. Take care of yourselves and one another. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are?
Girl A. Sex is her superpower. This woman got skills, but adds no value to him. Girl B. Her brains and beauty is her birthright. She's his eye candy and his arm piece. Girl C. She's his mama, his teacher, his better half, his soulmate, and the apple of his eye. Girl D. She's dangerously desperate. She's his thin line between love and hate, and his fatal attraction. All that and more in the seven-volume book series, The Men's Chronicles, A Woman's Guide to Men by Sir Walter Jones. Volume 1 is entitled The Four Women That Men Desire. Go to Amazon.com today for your copy.